Crow is a very neglected Pokemon competitively, and while it does have some super strong attack at base 125 and solid 100 HP, the Crow is a bit lacking in everything else. But we can make this thing an absolute monster. If we use Swagger, we can boost the opponent's attack while also confusing them, and then be like, hey, I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy that thanks to the Mirror Herb Held item. And now with our attack doubled, our speed definitely does not matter when you're just smacking people with stab sucker punches. With each knockout, we get another attack boost thanks to its Moxie ability, and Stab Brave Bird hits extremely hard, along with the ability to go for Ground Terra Blast for coverage. Honchkrow may have literally zero usage, but if it can get set up, this crow is a massive threat. So look, while I do love Honchkrow, I will not be happy until we get back the greatest fainting animation of all time. Milady. The crow absolutely does not get enough love, and so that is what I'm here for. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. It only takes you a second. I promise you will not regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Orthworm. Then comes out here, just standing there menacingly, and I have a doorknob. So we're a couple of steel fellas. I figure seems like a pretty good opportunity to go ahead and trade some Stealth Rock as that's what our boy Registeel does. So it turns out this thing's actually gonna go for the nasty plot. More menacing than we once thought. And that also tells me, hold on a second, this is in fact not an Orthworm. And that's actually gonna be a Hisuian Zorak. So while we see through the illusion, the problem is this thing's a little bit scary with a nasty plot. And while I am a max special defense Registeel, a lot of the time these are carrying like flamethrower coverage. So I just decide to stay in, wanna see what they wanna go for. Turns out it's going to be the Bitter Malice, which is not going to do a whole lot because, again, I'm about specially defensive as hell. And that allows me to then go for that Thunder Wave. Going to make this thing a whole lot easier to deal with. Kind of imagine this thing's working with a Focus Ash as a lead with that nasty plot. And uh, we're having a decent time here as long as they don't have the Flamethrower coverage. The problem is I don't have a whole lot that wants to switch into this, so I just decide to stay in. I want to get a Heavy Slam off just to break this thing's potential Sash. And that's exactly what we do. We can try to get lucky with some para turns. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, however. At least we do reveal the, the fella. And with the tentacles flowing around, this thing is kind of annoying. A whole lot less scary with that Thunder Wave on it, because I'll be faster on pretty much everything. But at this point, Registeel is, doesn't provide a whole lot of utility here. I'm kind of low on health. I figure I can maybe take one more, which I actually do, as they don't get fully paralyzed. And we're just continuing to hurl this big-ass heavy metal doorknob at the little ghostly fella. So after some leftovers, I'm thinking, can I win this 1v1? It would actually be kind of funny. I want to try to basically just get as much value out of this as I can, as I, I can't really switch out. If you actually get the full pair this turn, I'm like, hell yeah, Registeel. Let's grab ourselves a kill here, but it does not. And heavy it, it turns out, I just, sometimes you're just not heavy enough. How the hell heavy is Zorark? Turns out it's 178 pounds. What I do find that is some nonsense, Registeel is not even 500 pounds. What the hell's going on here? Anyway, they do actually end up getting off one more Bitter Malice and does finish off the Registeel. But I was at least able to set up my Stealth Rock and make this thing a whole lot easier to deal with. So, now we got a little Revenge Switch on our hands and it's time to see if we can get some shenanigans going. Especially with the Haunch Crow. Because as I come in here, this thing is paralyzed. I know that I'll be able to outspeed. And uh, a free kill with anything with Moxie is super nice. So, I bring in the Crow. We are looking extra purple in the sunlight. And at this point, I'm just going to go for the Brave Bird. I don't necessarily want to sucker punch in case they switch. And as it has no health left, the Brave Bird recoil is really not going to be worth anything. So, that does take care of the Zorark. And now, we are obviously going to get our nice little Moxie. And at plus one attack, Honchkrow is a pretty damn big threat. So... As they now get a revenge switch, they're going to decide to go into the mouse hold. Now it does, of course, take some stealth rock chip. But the problem with mouse hold is this little fella cannot stand clutter on the damn battlefield. They're likely going to go for a tidy up here. Now, it's kind of a coin flip of a turn here. If they don't go for the tidy up and I go for a brave bird, I am dead. So my best option is to go for the sucker punch. And the reason for that is because while I'm pretty sure they do tidy up, as they are actually going to end up sweeping it up, I am totally fine with that because as they're going to get themselves a nice little attack and speed boost while also in the process getting rid of the stealth rock, the mouse family is looking pretty damn scary over here, except that is going to activate my mirror herb and then so I steal the boost, I now have plus one speed and attack and we are still in the same situation here except now Honchkrow is just looking a little bit better. 
Now they are forced to pretty much attack here, and that's where the Sucker Punch comes in clutch, and that is going to take care of the mouse hold. So Mirror Herb is pretty useful in these situations, especially now that with that speed boost, I am going to be faster than a whole lot, and we get just an extra moxie for the damn road. So as they now switch into the Chestnut, Honchkrow is pretty well positioned here. Sucker Punch with that stab and attack boost starts to snowball really quickly because it's like, you're gonna have to attack me unless you have something with Toxic to stall me out. But at this point, I figure they probably go for the Spiky Shield, which that's exactly what they're gonna do. Now, predicting that, I'm actually just gonna go for the Swagger as I don't really wanna touch those spikes. And now we find ourselves in a spot where they can't really Spiky Shield again. And barring a defensive Terra, a Brave Bird is gonna absolutely obliterate the fella. We are looking nice and brave and purple, and that is gonna be a dead chestnut. So I do take some Rocky Helmet Chip along with the recoil from the Brave Bird. Um, but once again, Honchkrow is actually in a really good spot here, which just gets better because now we get another Moxie boost. So one of the problems with the Honchkrow is that taking a lot of chip ends up resulting in you know people having priority in the back and then being able to pick us off. But as they decide to now go into the Iron Bundle, I'm feeling pretty confident as it does actually get that Quark Drive to activate a little speed boost. Guess what you're not faster than, boy? These hands. Actually, I mean, we don't have any hands, but we sucker punch the hell out of them with our wing, and that does take care of it. At this point, the Honchkrow has spiraled out of control. We are, like, max attack at this point, and sucker punches do a whole lot. So, as they decide now to go into the Arcanine, it does get a little intimidate, which drops us down one peg, but doesn't really matter, and I can't really sucker punch here. That's because I'm expecting a potential... Um, for like an extreme speed and if they don't extreme speed which they don't actually click I'm faster now because of that tidy up that I was able to mirror herb. I had that plus one speed down goes the Arcanine and that is going to pretty much seal it up for the Honchkrow the absolute beast out here does take some more chip but again we just grab ourselves another moxie so the final Pokemon is actually going to end up being the actual Orthworm the guy we saw earlier it was a damn fake and Orthworm is a bit of a defensive problem for the Honchkrow. I do obviously have the Terra Ground, but this thing just eats up freaking ground moves. So, as they actually end up busting out the late game Terra, it is going to be the Terra Electric, which is a really good Terra for Orthworm just because, you know, now it has no super effective hits on it. So, I just decided to go for the Sucker Punch just because a Sucker Punch at this amount of attack is definitely going to kill. And they're gonna have to attack me eventually. So, they just actually end up going for the, the Stealth Rock, but he's like, you know what? It's finally time. I'm going to set up the latest game possible rocks. And while I do only have four sucker punches left, surely he's going to have to click it eventually to try to knock out the crow. But he's like, you know what? I'm actually just going to sprinkle some spikes there just for good measure. Just in case anybody wants to fuck around and come in here and step on some Legos. So at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm faster than this thing. And I'm like, wait, I have so much attack. Hunch crow is a monster. I'm just going to go for the brave rip. We're feeling brave out here. And that is going to kill the earthworm even through the resisted hit. So that is going to be the end of the game, and that's a pretty interesting showcase of Honchkrow. It can spiral out of control a little bit, and the recoil doesn't actually even knock us out. So sometimes you just got to body bag a fool with the crow. So with that, that is going to bring us into game number two, and there's plenty more crow shenanigans to be had. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Landorus, and that's kind of bad news because I have myself a prehistoric ass Magneton with a cool haircut, however, I obviously am in danger of like an earthquake here, but I'm going to go ahead and make a little risky decision here. I kind of imagine that they're going to go for a U-turn expecting me to switch, so instead I'm actually just going to go for the Stealth Rock. Now I am faster, tells me this thing is not going to be a Scarf Landorus, and at least the Stealth Rock is going to be nice. And they actually end up going for the Rock Tomb, likely predicting the switch into a flying type like the Honchkrow, and opting to run the Rock Tomb for the speed support over like a 10 more power Rock Slide. Uh, does make it a little bit annoying, obviously this thing is now going to be faster, but I don't have much to touch it with anyway. So I pretty much set up my Stealth Rock, take like 4 HP damage, and now I'm going to go ahead and get the hell out of here. So, while I imagine their safe play is to just go for that Earthquake here, I'm going to go ahead and switch into the Dusk Noir. Now the reason for that is because I feel like I'm probably bulky enough to maybe take two of them. I can also frisk to find that Citrus Berry, which uh, is good to know, and I actually end up going for the Stealth Rock. So, I'm feeling pretty good about that, and this Dusknoir is here to go ahead and punch some stuff. I actually do have the Ice Punch coverage that is basically for Landorus and Gliscor. So, as it now just goes for that Earthquake, 
it is going to do a good bit of chip, and then I just bop him with a nice little frozen fist. And that is exactly why Choice Band Dustnor is honestly pretty solid. Most people expect more of a support, but sometimes you just take a, a frozen fist to the chin, and that does take care of Landorus, which honestly feels good. That was a, a very annoying mon for my team. And as now they get a nice little revenge switch into literally the scariest thing ever, Urshifu is quite the damn problem, I'm not gonna lie. My team, pretty much nothing actually handles this thing, and that's because he has a triple hit move that always crits, and this is Game Freak's favorite child. So, I decided to switch into Drag Algae, and while I am more especially defensive, I'm thinking maybe I can just resist some Surging Strikes, and then, like, potentially be able to get off a Draco Meteor, and then just do some stuff, but... I just take three kicks to the head, and yeah, three crits in a row is going to put me below half. So I am likely in range for another to kill, unless that was like a max damage and then they get like a minimum or something. But they are going to just end up busting out the Terra. But he does not want to go ahead and mess up a roll here, so he's actually going to go for that Terra Water. And that is going to make this thing A, look damn ridiculous, and B, hit just harder than it should anyway. So it goes for another Surging Strikes. And uh, the Drag Algae is kind of just a nice little punching bag at this point. And literally three of them is easily going to be able to take me out. So, bad news is Urshifu is literally kryptonite to everything. Except, the good news is they did at least bust out the Terra. So, if I can get through this, I can kind of assure that there's going to be no surprises later. And the funniest part about this whole situation, you know what my best answer is to a Terra Water Urshifu? A freaking Fire-type pig. I'm going to end up going into the Embor. And obviously, my spicy ass is going to end up taking like 900% from a Surging Strikes. As I do come in, take some Stealth Rock, I'm like, well, there's only one thing I can do here to stop this Urshifu, and that is use up my own Terra. So, this is actually, it's a different kind of Embor. I've used this thing a bit in the past, but the plan is this. I can go for Terra Water, which is going to now allow me to obviously resist the water hits, and we're going full Water Pig now. Not only that... Um, but I'm actually like a special attacking set now. I have stab scalds But first of course they are gonna be able to get off that surging strikes and uh, with three hits This is kind of the only situation I had uh, to be able to live this but I also have the absorb bolt That's like the weirdest held item ever But being hit by a water move now activates that and gives me a special attack boost Which I am gonna actually need to be able to kill this thing in return so now I'm at sit I'm sitting at plus one special attack and after the three hits, we do luckily survive, and now I can go for the Grass Knot. So, Fire Pig comes in, turns into water, and then kills him with the Grass Move. We are free. Call me the damn Avatar out here. That does take care of the Urshifu, and uh, that is clutch, because I did have to at least use my Terra, but we got through the, uh, the Fighting Bear, and that thing is just always freaking scary. So... With the Revenge Switch, now they decide to go into the Regieleki, and um, obviously a Thunderbolt is no fun here, and while Embor is probably used up because I'm slow and just like mostly dead, I decided to switch into the Sandy Shocks because it kind of feels like Regieleki, at least its downfall, is that it's pretty damn predictable, and I know that it's likely just going to go for like something like a Volt Switch or a Thunderbolt, and as I go into the Sandy Shocks, they actually make the nice prediction and end up going into the Latios, and... Sandy Cheeks comes out being like, hey, I'm ready, I'm here to take my Thunderbolt, and then I'm like, wait, I did not expect to see you here, as uh, this is not super ideal. I've used up my, uh, my Drag Algae at this point, I don't really have any switch-ins to this thing, and so I'm just going to end up going for the Volt Switch, thinking maybe I can take an attack here, and as they go for the Draco Meteor, I do in fact just die. So losing the Sandy Shocks there is a bit unfortunate, because it's kind of my best check you know, to that Reggie Lucky, but... This does open the door for one purple bird, and that is going to be the Pimp Crow. I have a nice little opening here. As the Haunch Crow comes in, they obviously took the special attack drop, and they also know that uh, I have the type advantage here, so this is the exact situation where Swagger is kind of the optimal play, because as I expect them, they're kind of forced to switch. I can go for a Swagger on whatever they want to bring in, and it turns out to be the Dancing Electric light bulb fella. So, Reggie Lucky does come in. I do connect on my Swagger, because this homegirl has a hella Swagger. Gives him that sharp attack boost, and is going to confuse. And then Honchkrow's like, yo, this is just a fucking roundabout-ass way to get myself a Swords Dance. But that Mirror Herb is going to now activate. I'm now sitting at plus two attack. And while this fella is confused, I can just now just go for a Sucker Punch. They're kind of forced to attack. And with that plus two, it is easily going to be able to take care of the Regieleki. And they're just going to turn their switch off. Because Honchkrow, at this point, kind of 
had him in a checkmate, and they just decided, you know what, I'm going to save us both some damn time. So, <laughs> the Rage Quit versus the Hans Crow is hilarious, and that was just, just I thought it was kind of fun. So that is going to bring us into one more little bonus match. I, I feel like Honch Crow still has some damage to be done, and uh, we're working with a pretty scary team here, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time we've got ourselves a little Tyranitar lead, and it is going to get extra sandy out here. I got some sandy cheeks, and they are going to end up setting up the sand stream with the Tyranitar, so that's going to be a little bit annoying, but Tyranitar, I have a decent matchup here. I can't really end up doing enough damage, and then I just die to an earthquake. So I just decided to get uh, get the magnets the hell out of here. So the Volt Switch, gonna do a little bit of chip. It of course does get that uh, special defensive boost, being a rock type in the Sandstorm. But at this point, trying to figure out what they want to go for here, I am just gonna end up switching right into the Ghostly Fella here. It's kind of a risky maneuver. I don't have a whole lot that wants to deal with the Tyranitar. I do come in and at least find that smooth rock. It means that Sandstorm is gonna stick around for longer. And the Earthquake isn't going to do a whole lot of damage, but I do, of course, get some pocket sand in my damn eyes. And while they do have the option for a crunch here, I'm thinking maybe I can live. It turns out they're actually going to go for the payback. And that is one benefit of Dusnor being slow as hell, is that I can actually uh, live that since I was able to go second. And the Earthquake is going to finish off the Tyranitar. So, with that thing gone, now the Sandstorm is going to slowly whittle away. It does have, what, like seven turns now with that Smooth Rock. And while, you know, Dusnor did take way too much damn chip here, I'm kind of in range to just let this thing go down and then try to get a better position. So, as they actually bring in their next Sandy fella, the Land Shark, looking at this Garchomp, I'm thinking, hmm, I don't really want to stay in here in Earthquake. And I'm kind of thinking maybe they go for a Swords Dance here. I'm going to decide to switch into the Haunch Crow because I want to really try to get my Mirror Herb to work without having to use Swagger. So, as I go into the Haunch Crow, it's kind of a maneuver on, like, maybe they Earthquaked also. But they actually end up going for the scale shot, but it actually misses. So, it turns out scale shot misses for other people and not just me. And now as Haunt Crow is in here at a decent position, I have kind of a weird turn here. I'm thinking there's an option for them to go for like a Swords Dance now. Potentially they switch or they just go for an attack that I can potentially live. So, I'm going to end up committing to the Terra Ground as they actually end up switching out. Now something is about to have to take a swagger. And they're actually going to end up switching into the Ursa Luna. So, big ol' scary bear comes in, and my game completely glitches out as I go for the Terra. And we're just going to go ahead and skip that. So, I do go full Terra ground, and I am able to connect on the Swagger. So, this is actually kind of perfect. Now, that plus two attack is going to give us that roundabout-ass Swords Dance. And uh, that sometimes, listen, that's all the Haunch Crow needs. Now, the Terra ground kind of functions also as a way for me to not take the uh, the sand chip because I definitely need all the health that I can get. But at this point, we're also in a great spot because Honchkuro is going to be naturally faster uh, than the Blood Moon also. And so that feels pretty damn good. Now, they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra of their own. They're going to go for the Terra Normal, which is going to end up boosting this thing's Blood Moon attack um, if he's able to freaking get it off. But listen to me very closely. If you let Honchkuro get himself to plus two attack, this thing is going to hurt. A Brave Bird is just able to finish off the bear. And uh, we not only waste their Terra, but also one of their scariest fellas, uh, the Blood Moon, does go down. So, while we're we're sitting pretty nice at plus two attack, we actually also now get that Moxie. Brings us now to plus three. And I do still have a ton of health left. So, they now decide to go back into the Garchomp. They're like, well, I probably should have not switched this fella out. And while I'm not faster than Garchomp, I can just go for a Sucker Punch. And at plus three... That's just going to take care of it. Also important to note, this thing did not have the rough skin. Um, so that means it was probably trying to get the evasion with that Sandville uh, ability. Which, thank God, I didn't miss that Sucker Punch because I would have been very sad. But once again, Hans Crow has found her herself in a situation where now as Gastrodon comes in, all I really need to do is just go for a Terror Blast. I actually don't need the damage from Brave Bird because I have like so much attack at this point. It does not matter what the hell they've been feeding this Gastrodon. It does take care of it. The reason why I don't want to take unnecessary Brave Bird Chip is because they do have potential for a um, priority in the back in the form of a like a Bullet Punch Metagross, potentially. So, now they're just going to go into their own Sandy Shocks, and uh, it is feeling pretty in its natural habitat in the Sandstorm out here. It does get that Protosynthesis boost uh, to give it a nice little extra speed. But uh, once again, I will say it again, you are not faster than these Honch Crow hands. I can go for a Sucker Punch 
and we have effectively just snowballed out of control once again. That does take care of the Sandy Shocks, and uh, we are pretty much maxed out at this point. So their final Pokemon is actually going to end up being that Metagross. I figure if they haven't gone into it already, it probably doesn't have priority with a Bullet Punch. Uh, so as it brings it in, it actually is floating in the air with an Air Balloon, which is like, well shit, I actually cannot Terror Blast you, and Sucker Punch is kind of my only option here. And if they do Bullet Punch, I'm kind of in trouble, but we've done enough damage with the Honchkrow to where this game should be winnable. It turns out they do not go for the priority, and the Sucker Punch is just going to go ahead and knock out the old Xbox 360. And Honchkrow has absolutely done it once again. This thing is, it's very, it's super fun to use. Not all the time is it going to work, but when it does, this thing is a freaking problem. And that is going to do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I've always loved Honchkrow. And uh, I had to show the dude some love today. So make sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy the video. For real, the support is absolutely amazing on these. I'm having a whole lot of fun. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.